Now in video 16, we'll finish up the process of confirming the user's email. So in the last video, we set it up where we can actually send out the email, and now we got this link within the user's email. Now we need to send this information back to our API and actually confirm the user's email. So we'll be working within the spa and also we'll be working in the back end a little bit in this video. If you missed any of the prior videos, you'll always find the playlist up here in the top right corner. If you click on that, you'll get the entire playlist of what we did so far. Now let's go and look at the diagram that we were looking at in the last video. And what we got done so far is we send the user's information into the register API. And if the information is correct, we add it to the database. But at this point, the user's email is not confirmed. And then we gave the user a response. Then in the last video, we added this on, where we actually set up an email service. So when the user creates an account, we send them an email. And then in the email, they have a token and the user ID. So now when the user clicks on this link in their email, we're going to send them to the Angular application. Now there's different ways you could do this, but in this case, what I'm going to do is just send them right back to the Angular application. The Angular application is going to send the token and the user ID to a new API. We'll be working inside that API in this video. And then we'll actually update the database and confirm the user's email. At the end of the video, we'll check the database and make sure that the user's email is confirmed. In step one and step two, we'll be working in the front end the Angular application. And we'll work inside the auth service and also the confirm email component. I already set up the email confirm component just to save us some time. And we already set up the auth service in a prior video. Let's open up all the files within the Angular application that we'll be working inside of. So the confirm email TS file. And we're not going to make any changes to the HTML, but we'll check that out. And then also the auth service. We'll be working inside this confirm email method. And then also the routing so we'll set up the routing as well and we'll start inside the routing so all you want to do if you're following along in this project is uncomment this and bring in the confirm email component now this is the route so this is who's going to be handling the confirmation of our email and that is this link right here and that's what we already set up so that's the confirm email and that's all we need to do inside of this file we could save this and shut this down Next, we'll move into the auth service inside the confirm email. And this section right here, you can remove this and recomment this back in, add this back in. And here, all we're doing is we're going to call our identity controller, and the endpoint is going to be confirm email. And we haven't set this up yet, but we'll be setting that up in a second. And we're passing in the user ID and also the token. And that's what we're passing in here. And that's all we need to do within the auth service. If we check out the TS file, here we're getting the token and the user ID from the params. And if we go back into our email, and that's what we're passing in right here, the token and the user ID. So once we get that, we'll save it within the URL params right here. Then we'll call our confirm email method right here. And then here's where we're calling the auth service the method we just set up within our auth service and we pass in the user ID and the token. This is very similar to what we were doing in prior videos, like we were working with our progress bar and also giving the user some feedback. But the difference here is we're setting a property. So if the user successfully confirms their email, we're going to set this property to true. If there's a failure for any reason, we'll set it to false. So when the user is looking at the view, and they successfully confirm their email, they're going to see this message right here. But if there's a failure, they're going to see this message. That's all we need to do within the Angular application. Now let's set up our API. We set up step one and step two, the front end, the Angular part of it. Now we're ready to go into the API and set that part up. So we're at this point right now. We took care of the Angular side. We're sending the token and the user ID to the API. So we'll work inside the API. If everything goes well and the token's valid and the user ID is valid, then we'll update the database. Inside the backend, open up the identity controller and I'll close down the login API and the registry API. And I already set up the basics for confirming our email, this API right here. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna grab the user from the database. 
and we'll do that by the user ID and we're passing in the user ID right here. If we check out this confirm email view model, we're passing in the token and the user ID and both of these fields are required. So let's grab the user out of the database. So we're going to set it to a variable called user and we'll use the user manager and a method called find by ID async and we're passing in the user ID that we're getting from the model. The reason we're getting this error here is because we're using the await, so we need to make this an async method. And don't forget to add in the task. That should take care of our error. So assuming that we're getting a user, we could pass that in to confirm the user's email, and we'll do that here. So we'll use the user manager again, and they give us another method called confirm email async, we pass in the user, and then the token that we're getting from our model. Inside this result, we get a property called succeeded. So if we succeeded, we'll get back true. If we did not succeed, we'll get back false. So if we succeeded, we're gonna give back a 200 status, okay. And I'll do that right here. So if result succeeded, return okay. And then if it did not succeed, we'll just return a bad request. And that's all we need to do within our confirm API. So let's test everything out. Make sure you restart the application and go ahead and fire up your Angular application. Now we're ready for testing. So the best way to do this is to go through all the steps of creating a new user and confirming the email. So what we'll do is we'll start at the beginning within our register form inside the Angular application. We'll make a call to our API and try to create a brand new user. We'll add that new user to the database and then we'll check our email and see if we get an email. Before we do all that, let's go and clean out our database, get rid of all the users and do some housekeeping. In the database, we'll select all these dummy users and we'll delete them. And if you're interested in using DB Browser for SQLite, I created a video on how to set this up on your machine and you'll find that in, in my YouTube channel. So let's wipe all these out. So I selected everything, and then I'm just gonna delete, delete all the current records. After deleting everything, make sure you write the changes. I always forget to click on this button, and I don't see the changes when I'm testing. So make sure you click on Write Changes. Now that we're ready to jump into the register form. Now, when I was testing this before, I ran into an error, and the reason is, is I didn't set up my claim property correctly. And I'll show you that right now. And that I already pushed up to GitHub. So you'll see that on GitHub, the fix I did for that. If we go back to the application, I'll show you where I fixed that. And that is inside of the register component. And I commented this part out. So this is the fix I did. I changed it from claim to job title. So if you have this within your code, you want to remove this and add in job title or or you're gonna get an error. So I'm adding in a unique username and a unique email, and also I'm adding in a valid email, very important because we're gonna be confirming our email. So you wanna make sure you add in a valid email. And password is one, two, three, four, don't tell anyone. So let's test this out. And we successfully created an account. Now if we go into our email, we get a new email. I'll click on the email, and then now we get this link. So if we click on this link, it should send us back to the Angular application and confirm our email. And we have a email confirmed, that's great. So let's see if we successfully updated our database. We created our user, we got a email, we clicked on the email, we ended up in our Angular application. Our Angular application told us that we were successful at confirming our email. So let's see if we actually did update our database correctly. If we go into the database, I'll use DB Browser to check out the database in this case. Before we were using an extension within Visual Studio Code, you could use that as well. But if we go in here and I'll hit refresh, we got a brand new user. And as you can see right here, we have confirmed the user's email. And video 16 is the final video for this course. I hope you enjoyed the course. Uh, if you like the videos, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next course.